So you see here we've logged in as our purchasing manager. Now, once again, uh, this is another role and dashboard that comes out of the box. You'll see here that this is focused around um, all of our procurement requirements. So you'll see once again, um, we've got our reminders, we've got our KPIs, we've got different sections to make sure the purchasing manager has the visibility of the data that they require. Now, there's various different ways to enter new purchase orders into the system, um, but just using the tiles here, we can create a new PO from here. So you see here, we have opened up our PO uh, form here. Now, these forms can be customised to make sure that they only hold the information that you need. So all of these fields can be added or removed depending on your requirements. Now that applies across the board in terms of different transactions. If there are any additional fields that you require, then they can be added in. And that doesn't require any IT resource. That can all be carried out by end users. Now you see here, it's just a case of selecting a couple of different fields here. So if we just enter our, our supplier, first of all, you see that based on our supplier, a lot of the information defaults um, based on our supplier record. So you see that we have gone to our UK subsidiary. You see that our currency has been selected as GBP, which is our main currency for this supplier. You also see here as well, in terms of billing, we have taken um, all of the information that is on uh, this supplier's record, which is automatically pre-filled this year. In terms of the shipping, you'll see that we've picked up information from our UK subsidiary to make sure that we've got the correct ship to address. Now, coming here, just enter in a couple of the mandatory fields, which are indicated by the asterisks here. You see here as well that although the base currency for this uh, supplier, so the main currency for this supplier is GBP, we do have the option to purchase in different currencies. And you'll see here as we select the currency, the exchange rate changes based on the information that we've got in the tables in NetSuite. So we just change this back to GBP. You'll see that this um, user as well as a purchasing manager has the option to enter the MPOs on behalf of other employees, but we'll just enter it on behalf of themselves here just now. Now, in terms of entering a PO, it's as simple as going through and entering items. So for this demonstration, we'll just enter some office supplies. So a general item here just for purchasing office supplies. It would then just be a case of entering in the quantity and rate. So we'll just enter 500 just now. Clicking add and then saving the PO. Now, in terms of approval processes, um, the PO approval process does come out of the box, um, but there are various different options in terms of how you may want to configure this. So, that you, you may want um, departmental PO approvals or you may want hierarchical. These can all be set up in the system using NetSuite's workflow generator. So you see here when we save this PO, it has gone to a status of pending supervisor approval. And if we go into the approvals tab here, you'll see that it is Andy Morgan who has to approve this PO. Now, once again, depending on your preferences, this can be configured to be based on a number of different things, including departmental or hierarchical approval flows. So if we just log back into our CFO, who is Andy Morgan, then we'll approve this PO and carry on with the rest of the process. So you see here, if we refresh our home dashboard, we have now got one purchase request to approve. And if we click in here, you'll see that we've got PO 140 that we just entered into the system just now. Now you see here that if we did have uh, various purchase requests here, then we could bulk approve. But for the sake of this demonstration, we'll just click into the PO here and see that we've got the full level of detail of what was entered onto the PO. Now we do have the option to approve or reject, but for the sake of time and sake of this demonstration, we'll just approve this PO for the time being. Now, depending on the supplier's preferences, this PO can then be automatically emailed directly to our supplier. So you see here, the status has changed to approved by supervisor and pending receipt. And if we go onto our communication tab and onto our messages, you'll see that we have sent um, an email of our PO, 
with an attachment to our supplier. Now, of course, um, these forms would be customized to your own um, business branding. So make sure that you've got the logo and you've got the PO and the format that you require. This is just an example of how it could look. Now you see here as well that we have got the full audit trail. So in terms of approvals, we've got the information as to who approved this PO and exactly when they did that, as well as the full uh, system information level of data. Um, so making sure here that we've got all the details of who entered what fields and exactly when they did that as well. So now that this is at a status of pending receipt, it would then be up to somebody to actually receive this item in. Now, in terms of receiving items, it is preference whether you would want to receive or go straight to invoice in terms of goods receipting.